Tezos branding will now be displayed on the race suits of McLaren, Formula One and IndyCar drivers. So they said that uh, the McLaren Racing said that it plans to build an NFT platform on the Tezos blockchain. And uh, these NFTs will illustrate their racing history and heritage and famous drivers and all of that stuff. So it's kind of like this, um, this way to, I guess, encapsulize this history of this and make these collector's items. It's kind of interesting, but, um, you know, I'll throw it to you, Will. But to start off with, please congratulate me on bringing something to the sports desk. <laughs> well, I don't know if, if racing counts as a sport. Uh, there's no God damn it, off. I'm trying my you best said it, not me. <laughs> <sighs> Just kidding. Actually, no, very tough to drive those things, so I won't, I won't hate on it. No, that's interesting. Like the, the, I like some of these uh, sports NFT things, uh, famously bearish on other NFTs. So... I guess I don't have much take besides that, but I'm gonna give it to Zach. This is like really his bread and butter. This is why we have him on the show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> this is the honor only Naomi. I'm gonna honor um, sort of the uh, you know the, the the changing roles that we're gonna do here, and I'm just gonna forget the sports ball stuff. I don't know what sports ball is going on here. I couldn't tell you a famous race car driver if you put a gun to my head. So we're not gonna do that. But I, what <laughs> I do want to talk about is. The Tezos blockchain. I haven't heard the Tezos blockchain yeah. in a long time. And I'm very curious mm -hmm. about what's going on over there and what uh, the teams who are building on that network are seeking to accomplish. And if this is sort of, uh, okay, an indicator that, all right, we got our, you know, we have our table stakes NFT platform. Uh, I'm really curious to see sort of like what comes next for Tezos because it's one of these networks that has been quite quiet. And I just am like, well, what happened to them? They raised a bunch of money back way back when. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the deal? So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. toss that one back to you, Naomi. Yeah, I can give some insight here. So the Taser story is kind of fascinating. Um, they raised just a ton of money, got so much uh, attention in the space because of their ICO raise. And then uh, there was this big, basically there was this struggle between the foundation and, uh, and everyone else. And the guy who was in charge of the foundation turns out to not be that great a guy. Um, and so they, you know, because there was this kerfuffle, then this class action lawsuit started, which tied up their funds for like three years. Uh, so everyone was like, there's a kerfuffle, you know, we, nothing's happening on the chain. This is not what we were promised. And so it was kind of a sad story because they really are cutting edge tech or they were at the time and their hands were kind of tied because they just couldn't touch their money for a lot. It's been in their favor though, because they were planning, the foundation was planning on taking the money raised and putting a lot of it into stocks so that they could, you know, continue to fund this and long-term development. Ended up, they couldn't touch it. So it all stayed in Bitcoin. Bitcoin just went up such a huge amount in price. Now they're sitting on billions. So you have a very smart team sitting on billions of dollars trying to figure out what they're going to do with this. And now all of that stuff has been settled and they can go full steam ahead with tech development. But now they're kind of, you know, at a disadvantage because they were at the cutting edge and now they have to figure out how to get back to the cutting edge of all of this. They are experimenting with like ZK rollups. They're looking at, you know, robust privacy implementations. I know Kathleen Brightman was digging into like the gaming world for a while. Now they're doing like NFT stuff. I would be interested to see what happens there. Um, you know, you're right. They have been very quiet. So I think the whole space is kind of like, tease us. I remember them, you know, but um, as I said, got a tremendous amount of resources under their belt. So we'll see what use that is, uh, that is put to now that they've got that engine going again. Uh, the engine. Hey, that look was at that. Nice. Engine. That was so good. 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 Unintentionally clever of me. That was so good. That was so smooth. Um, all right, yeah. I mean, I'm going to do an alley-oop to Will real quick before we wrap. I mean, I just feel like they're sort of flirting with like ghost chain territory in narrative land, and I'm really curious to see if they can uh, pull back from that and show the market some exciting stuff. Is there any like... Tezos projects that you're aware of, Will, that uh, jump out to you? Every Tezos project I've heard of has just been more of a copy and paste of what Ethereum is doing. That's not to say that it won't have practical solutions like the future, like something that's valuable. But for right now, yeah, it's just like name is to like, oh, let's do NFTs also. Uh, or let's well, do... Well, one thing that differentiates from... Ethereum, right, Will, is Ethereum's trying to get to proof of stake and Tezos is already there. So it could be interesting territory, even in terms of a copy-paste model. I think just for yeah, the I, mean, they both have... I know, go, go ahead. ahead. 
I was just going to say, like, writ large, I think it's really interesting to see these, like, chains that get built out and either stalled for legal purposes or just spent a really long time building um, and, like, don't have a ton of projects on them necessarily. I'm really curious to see if they're going to be able to catch up, right? We see other chains moving really quickly. We see projects, like, being established or already established, and we see, like, ecosystems starting to grow. And I think it's going to be a lot harder to, like, attract people to your chain if they're already somewhere else, unless you, like, have some incentive or maybe use some of that funding, right, to incentivize people to move projects. So there are a few different projects out there like that. And I think we're going to get into a thing where they have to like scale and catch up really quickly. And that's going to be quite challenging.